On the 31st of June 1971, the Soyuz 11 capsule made its re-entry to Earth after spending 22 days docked to the first ever space station. The three cosmonauts on board had been the first crew to inhabit the space station and in doing so set records for their prolonged time in orbit. However, they would also be the last, with the space station being intentionally destroyed not long after their visit. The capsule touched down in remote Kazakhstan where a retrieval team was waiting for them. The Soyuz 11 crew could not be reached over radio, however, and did not respond to the grand team knocking on the hull of the capsule. One of the founders of the Soviet space industry, Lieutenant General Karim Karimov, would later describe the events. Outwardly, there was no damage whatsoever. They knocked on the side, but there was no response from within. On opening the hatch, they found all three men in their couches motionless, with dark blue patches on their faces and trails of blood from their noses and ears. The Soyuz 11 crew were dead, but how? The Salyut 1 was history's first space station, launched by the Soviet Union on the 19th of April 1971. The first manned expedition to the station was Soyuz 10. However, after reaching the station, the crew ran into trouble docking and the mission had to be aborted. The plan was then to follow up with Soyuz 11 in hopes to succeed where Soyuz 10 had failed and spend an extended period of time inhabiting the Salyut 1 station. Soyuz 11 would be commanded by the experienced Alexei Leonov, who had been the first human to conduct a spacewalk in 1965. In his crew were Valery Kubasov, who also had experience as a cosmonaut, being the first human to conduct welding experiments in space in earlier Soyuz missions, as well as Peter Kolodin, who had not yet been to space. However, just days before takeoff, Kupasov was found to have a swelling in his lung which doctors feared was indicative of tuberculosis. As per mission rules, the entire crew was to be replaced with the backup crew. Commander George Drobovalsky, Vladislav Volkov and Viktor Patsayev, of whom only Volkov had been in space. The primary crew was devastated, arguing with command over the decision. With so much of a space program's work being done on the ground, having the actual opportunity to go into space is a rare one. They argued that, as Kubasov was the only one with any detectable issues, only he should be replaced. But protocol did not allow for this, and instead the entire crew was swapped out with Dobrovolsky's team. It would later turn out that Kubasov had been misdiagnosed and went on to make a full recovery. Ironically, being diagnosed with tuberculosis may have saved his life. On the 6th of June 1971, Dobrovolsky, Patsayev and Volkov took off, arriving at the station Salyut 1 the next day. Unlike Soyuz 10, they were able to successfully dock with Salyut 1 and enter, marking a historic milestone for humanity's exploits in space. Dobrovolsky and crew spent the next three weeks in space, a record amount of time that would not be bested until the American Skylab 2 mission in 1973. Their stay aboard Salyut 1 was to be a productive one, with the men conducting experiments and broadcasting television images from inside the station. Viktor Patsayev became the first man to celebrate his birthday in space when he turned 38 halfway through their stay. The mission was not without incident, however, with a fire breaking out aboard the station. This was brought under control, and by the 29th of June, the mission could be considered a resounding success. Dobrovolsky's crew then began their return to Earth. They were able to successfully undock from Salyut 1 and began to make their descent. At some point, however, the crew ceased to make reports or answer calls. Mission Command hoped that this was simply a failure in communications, but the reality was much worse. As the descent module detached from the service module, a valve was knocked loose. This exposed the capsule to the vacuum of space at an altitude of over 160 kilometers. As pressure escaped from the cabin, the result for the crew was catastrophic.
Unfortunately for the Bravalsky, Volkov and Patsayev, the decompression of the cabin was not instant. Although subjected to extreme physiological stress, the men could have survived in the capsule for up to a minute as it gradually lost pressure. Cavities of air in your body such as your lungs would begin to expand painfully. Gas in your bloodstream would begin to form bubbles and start to block your blood flow, even rupturing blood vessels. Oxygen starvation will quickly set in and the cosmonauts would have been stupefied and rendered unconscious within 20 seconds. For reference, a 1965 experiment conducted by researchers at the Brooks Air Force Base in Texas exposed dogs to near vacuums for short periods of time before bringing back pressure and reviving the dogs. The dogs were knocked unconscious and paralyzed during their exposure. Gas expansion in the stomach and bowels often resulted in defecation, urination and vomiting, as well as inflating the dogs like balloons. They suffered seizures and their tongues were often found to be covered in ice. When brought back to normal pressures, the dogs shrank back down to their normal size, resumed breathing and regained consciousness. They experienced extreme fatigue and could only move after about 15 minutes, and they also appeared to exhibit blindness for another 15 minutes. These dogs had only been exposed to about 90 seconds of low pressure though. Dobrovolsky and his crew would have been exposed for about 10 minutes before re-entering Earth's atmosphere, by which point they were all dead. Ground crews attempted to resuscitate the cosmonauts, but their efforts were futile. George Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov and Viktor Patsayev were given state funerals and were each posthumously awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Medal. The success of Soyuz 11 as the first manned flight to a space station was overshadowed by the tragic loss of life. And Salyut 1 had to be decommissioned as it ran out of supplies during the time the Soyuz capsules were being redesigned. The decision was made to lower Salyut 1 from orbit where it would be destroyed upon re-entry. The Salyut program continued however, paving the way for the modern day International Space Station. Indeed the first ISS module was the Russian made Zarya which relied heavily on technologies developed in the Salyut program as well as the advances made possible by George Derbovolsky, Vladislav Volkov and Viktor Patsayev.